Good morning everyone, Scott from Texas Prepper Projects and here is video two of my solar air heater. So let's answer a couple of questions from the first video. Number one, does it work when it's cold outside? Well, it's a big blue sky but it is currently 69 degrees air temperature standing here. In the shade it's about 54 thereabouts. So the air at the bottom of the intake is 75 degrees and the air at the top is a hundred and seventy three I can feel it now the fan is not plugged in but I can feel the air right here so let's recap what have we got I've got a wooden box here that's about three feet by five feet I'll put that in meters for you guys and then inside I have about 50 feet of four inch dryer vent and it's painted black. Yes, it was supposed to be matte black at the top, but something happened with the paint can. It didn't dry properly. So that's why it's kind of shiny at the bottom. It's on some pink foam insulation. I'll show you the back in a second with a Mylar space blanket over the top. And then I have a piece of plastic over the top. This plastic is actually a shower curtain. So I've created a little miniature greenhouse. Down at the bottom, I have a four inch computer case fan. Now, this is not my end game setup. I believe that for this to work effectively, you need to have circulation. And so what I would do in the real world, if I had a shed over here, I would have an intake hose going from the bottom of the shed into here and the fan would be sucking the cold air from the bottom and then blowing hot air out of the top. Since hot air rises, I would be constantly pulling cold air out of the bottom of the enclosure. Check out my other video on my geothermal system ideas. So my big surprise that I talked about a couple of weeks ago is that I have a friend who's letting me put a shed on his property. So I have a 10 by 12 metal shed under construction and I'm going to be using this to test the theory if I can heat a small space with basically nothing. So this does work with no electricity because hot air rises it's being cool. The cold air is being sucked in here from convection and then coming out the top. I believe that having a little fan in the bottom actually uh, makes it work better. And I'm going to plug in my little fan and I'm going to show you here in just a second. But let's give you a little tour. 73, 74 degrees coming in the bottom. And 175 in the top. And here's the back of the unit. It's just pink foam board insulation with some little angle brackets. And then there's a row of double stick tape that goes around the outside to uh, try to make a seal. And then in the shade is 66 or 19 Celsius for my European friends. Watch what happens when I plug the fan in. So the temperature is gonna go up slightly. The intake temperature is dropping. It's actually 63 and falling as the air kind of starts to circulate. I believe that the temperature will go up and then drop as things kind of uh, stabilize a little bit. Now the fan down below is actually very low powered. It's only like a hundred CFM. It's just helping kind of push the air around a little bit. I'm sure that there is a relationship formula between uh, what the turnover rate of the air should be. So my shed is 10 by 12 by seven feet high. So that's 700, 800 cubic feet. So with that fan, that means it's gonna take 10 minutes for the air to change over theoretically. 
So I wonder, and this is the point of my experiment that's coming soon, is if I change over the air faster, will it be more effective? I, I don't know. And that's why science is fun. And that's why I'm doing these experiments to learn. And uh, hopefully someone can uh, use this uh, in a different situation. You could absolutely make this out of cardboard and spare parts. To me, the key difference is the circulation. Most of the pop can heaters that are out there have cold air intakes from the bottom and then hot air coming out. God, that is still hot. I can still feel that. That's, and it's still 177 degrees. That is unbelievable. Wow. But I don't believe that that's the most efficient because you're constantly warming fresh air. Whereas if you have a circulation vector pulling cold air from the enclosure and then reheating it, you're not working so hard. The other thing is, will this work in extreme cold? You know, if you're in Canada or someplace like that where it's in the negatives. I was born in North Dakota, actually, which is very cold. No, I don't think that this is going to heat your house or heat, you know, anything above, you know, freezing or anything like that. But if you have the sun is shining and you just want some warmth, if you think about it, every degree that this raises the temperature is one less degree that you have to use a fire or propane or electrical stove or electrical heat or whatever. So this is a very, very, very simple, very low power way to give you a boost to bring that temperature up so that way your other heating devices don't have to work quite so hard. And in the time I've been talking, we're at 175, so the temperature is starting to drop just a little bit as the air moves. I can see the intake temperature down below is 62 degrees, but that is incredible. And this thing's been in with the sun for about 15, 20 minutes, and I'm generating a ridiculous temperature. And just to be certain, the temperature probe is in the middle of the vent down here. It's not touching anything. I specifically positioned it to be dead center. And I can feel that. Wow, that is unbelievable. One of my little secret weapons here is this 120 millimeter fan to four inch dryer vent adapter. These are made for uh, grow rooms. So this really makes uh, adapting to four, four inch vent pipe really, really easy. And I'll let me just drop a fan right on with some really uh, small bolts. I'm using a small lithium ion battery just for testing purposes, but you absolutely could run this thing on solar since you have to have a clear sky to make it work. A little $20 solar panel would easily run this. This fan draws about 100 milliamps, 150 milliamps, so this would be more than enough. Behind me is my bedroom window. So that's east, that's west, and that's south. So in a dire emergency like snow apocalypse, like we had a couple of years ago, I could open my bedroom window and take a vent pipe from the output, push it in my bedroom window, and get hot air blowing in there. So this could work as a emergency heating system, assuming you've got a clear blue sky, but you just have a cold air temperature, which is exactly what happened to us during snow apocalypse. So here it is. Here is my solar air heater that's putting out temperatures of 170 degrees Fahrenheit with a tiny little fan, the power of the sun, and the greenhouse effect. It's pretty awesome. So I'll put a parts list down below if you want to try something like this yourself. So uh, drop a comment down below. Give me a thumbs up and let me know what you think. Thanks, everybody. See you on the next one.